Hi everyone. Um, everyone's efforts campaigning for disability and carer benefits, disability rights and a caring society have already had a big impact. But mothers have been left out. When people talk about carers, usually they don't include mothers, yet mothers are the first carers for everyone. Mothers-to-be are the ones who fight for disabled children to exist, despite all the pressures, including that it costs the NHS and society too much. Among disabled people, care can be a sore point. We are blamed for causing hardship to family carers, because society doesn't provide the money, time and support that carers need. Carer Watch, who have sent a message of support today, quote a government report. The low level of carers' allowance discourages people from providing care to family members. As disabled children, we felt guilty for causing stress and the upsetting incidents that happened, but also frustrated. We didn't choose this. As a child, when it was time to go home from hospital, I didn't want to leave the communal life we had as kids on the ward to be on my own all day with my mum until my sisters and dad came home. Our house was not accessible and I knew her temper would fray when the lifting got too much. In hospital, even lying flat in full plaster, we could scoot around on boards with casters on. The NHS employed craftsmen to improvise equipment, which they would make immediately. Why didn't my mother get the recognition and help she needed to make her home accessible and for me to be able to socialise with other kids? Her temper would have frayed much, frayed much less if she'd had the support. Disabled people have fought to, de to escape dependence and being patronised, employing our own carers with direct payments, topped up by the Independent Living Fund and calling it personal assistance, not care. But this independence is under attack. The government is using direct payments and choice to refuse the state's responsibility for people's welfare. One example, Camden Council cut off Jennifer Spencer's direct payments on the basis she was not managing them properly. She was forced to depend on an abusive man and was found dead in her inaccessible flat some months later. Younger and older people with disabilities don't want to see home care workers underpaid and overworked on zero hour contracts paid only per visit, 15 or 30 minutes. But privatisation has destroyed most of the trust between service users and wage carers, replaced by resentment on both sides. Because they're forced to hurry, they think you're too slow answering the door and rudely rush round leaving things half done. The unions bear a lot of responsibility for letting the private companies in. The latest scandal is about pensioners with dementia being put on electronic tag. Many women who become disabled or who have children with disabilities are single mothers because their partner couldn't accept this or share the work of dealing with it. 700,000 child carers is because parents are not getting social services. Mothers who do seek help end up being investigated as unfit. But sick and disabled mothers are found fit for work by Atos when we manage to care for our children. Our caring work is counted, but only to deny us benefit. As John was saying, the suicides and premature deaths of sick and disabled people have escalated and are being called genocide by the back door. And we are fighting case by case for people, mostly with mental health problems, to get on the support group of ESA. Against, um, against the idea that we are useless eaters, as we were called by the Nazis. And also the government now is using equality to justify denying any consideration to people. The petition aims to bring together mothers and other carers with those of us who need care, reaffirming our entitlement to survival, dignity and well-being.